Thursday, August 7, 2014. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's the season finale of USF Housing Live! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's the season finale of USF Housing Live. How's everyone doing tonight? We are so happy to have you here. We've got experts from all around campus. We've got RAs, we've got RLCs. We're gonna tell you what they all mean, don't worry. We've got an expert from Career Services. We've even got an expert from our common reading experience and one of our faculty and residents. So we've got you covered. And if you have any questions, know that you can simply log into YouTube by clicking sign in, type in your net ID, and then follow the prompts from there, and you'll be good to go. Ask us anything, they'll send me the questions right here on the set, and we'll answer you live on the air. So we know a number of our viewers are watching this right now from around the world, and you may have questions about Global Beginnings Week, that is orientation for international students. So unfortunately, we weren't able to have an expert from orientation with us on the program tonight, but they did provide a few questions. I'm gonna go ahead and answer those for you right now. And remember, if you have more questions, just send them our way in the YouTube comments and we'll be happy to address them for you. So first up, we get the question, can my family participate? Yes, they can, of course. The next question is, are there any additional fees for housing and meal plan? Again, referring to Global Beginnings Week. No, these fees are included in orientation and Global Beginnings Week for first year students. Another question is, how can I find the academic calendar and information about breaks between semesters? And we'd like you to go to usf.edu slash registrar and click calendars. All the information you need will be right there. When will I know my class schedule? Well, you're going to register for classes on day two of orientation. That will be on August 19th. Another question we get often is, how will I buy my books? Well, once you've picked your classes, the USF Bookstore website has the most accurate list of books for each class. You can order them there online or just go to the bookstore. And then there's some questions about tips for keeping in touch with family while traveling. So our orientation office recommends using Wi-Fi based messaging apps, such as WhatsApp, Kick or Viber. And another question here, last one, how can I get more information about Global Beginnings Week? All you gotta do, go to usf.edu slash global beginnings or email globalbeginnings at usf.edu. So with that out of the way, we'd actually like to take a moment and go on over to our senior move-in correspondent, Sandiana Merville over in Maple Hall. Sandiana, how are you doing this evening? Greg, I'm doing fantastic. I'm actually standing out right here outside of Maple Hall and I'm ready to move in. Uh, Sandiana, I see that you have uh, a companion with you. What's going on over there? It's actually Jay Kitty. Um, Jay Kitty. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, is that a permanent marker? It's all we had. <laughs> James, James, I don't think you're supposed to talk, pal. Greg, I don't believe that you're supposed to refer to me as James. It's Jay Kitty. <laughs> oh, and he's, he's doing the thing. I see. He's doing the thing. Well, I'm very sorry. Um, Jay Kitty, unfortunately, you can't live in the residence halls with us, so you're going to have to say goodbye. Bye, Jay Kitty. Bye, Jay Kitty. Aww. I'm meowed of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, Sandiana, I'm sorry to have taken away your pal, but uh, could you tell us what's move-in day going to be like? Actually, it's not going really well right now. There's a lot of rain and thunder, and I, don't, I think there might be a hurricane. Oh my goodness, Sandiana, please, you need to get to cover immediately. Please, find shelter. Find Greg, shelter immediately. Greg, and just... Greg, it's completely fine. It's Florida. It's been 30 seconds now. Of course the weather's changed. <laughs> well, that was surprising. All right. Well, um, I guess with that out of the way, we'll continue our satellite feed, and I have a few questions for you. How's that sound? That's fine. That's great. All right, Sandiana, so uh, all joking aside, uh, we hear all the time about what do I bring to campus? So if a student wants to know what do I bring for moving in, uh, where do they find that information? Well, actually, if you visit our website at usf.edu slash housing, go ahead and click on the banner and you'll be able to go in and see a comprehensive list. All right, well, thank you, thank you. I heard that you're going to be an RA, is that true? Yes, actually, I'm going to be an RA for the Maple Buildings. So. Um, one thing that residents are going to want to know is how do I find my RA when I arrive? Well, I know with me, uh, during move-in day, I'm going to be there in the lobby greeting everybody with a smile. 
All right, so um, are you the police? <laughs> no, actually, I'm not the police. I'm a resident assistant. You have to tell me if you're the police. Are you the police? No, no. As a resident assistant, I help to build community within the residence hall. I'm not the police. I get that question a lot about RAs, so uh, maybe you can tell me, what, what does the RA do? Actually, um, as an RA, we help to build community within the residence halls. We help to open communication so that um, everybody knows each other and that everything's going really, really well. Well, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining us via satellite from Maple. Seems very unnecessary, but I'm glad that we were able to talk with you this evening. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a short break, and we'll be right back with Angie Harris, one of our Residence Life Coordinator seniors. So we'll be right back with Angie for USF Housing Live after this. <laughs> So um, we're going to have a little bit more soon. All right, so we're here with Angie Harris. Uh, so Angie, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing all right. So Angie, how about we just roll right into the questions? All right, let's do it. Uh, can you tell me, what is it that you do here at USF? So I'm a Residence Life Coordinator for the Cypress Departments and Suites. Um, so I oversee that particular community. I also supervise the RAs and the ARLC for that area. Great. And um, one of the questions we're getting a lot when we're talking about opening is sure. soft opening versus grand opening. Sure. So could you take us through what the difference is? Sure. So the biggest difference is actually dates. Soft opening will actually occur on sun beginning Sunday the 17th um, at 10 a.m. And after that, um, it will run all the way through Wednesday the 20th. Grand opening will actually begin on Thursday the 21st beginning at 9 a.m. right in the Marshall Student Center. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So actually, I'll speak on that for a moment to get everyone ready for grand opening. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows you can arrive early, as Angie has just said, as early as Sunday, August 17th. You can also arrive later, if you wish, uh, as late as noon on Monday, August 25th. However, if you think you're going to be that late, please make sure you send us an email at housing at USF edu and let us know so I just wanted to jump in there Angie Absolutely. make sure I covered that and we're all good great information um, so can you tell us um, the students when they arrive um, they're gonna have the grand opening day what's Absolutely. the day gonna look like very energetic so once they check in at the Marshall Student Center and they have their keys their swipe access is all good they have their parking taken care of they have their meal plan and all of that stuff sorted out when they arrive to their residence hall they're gonna be encountered by NRA their RA a number of RAs that are ready to greet them and help them move in we're gonna have full hall volunteers that will be ready and smiling and all energetic energetic um, and ready to help them get their USF experience started um, at about 4 30 p.m. on grand opening day we have something called kickoff it's sort of a big deal here it's a tradition here at USF and it's really a way to get students excited about being at USF and being a bull from the very beginning. Awesome, awesome. So where does everyone go to get their key? The Marshall Student Center. Just if they're, sure. if okay. they're arriving right. on grand opening day, um, if they arrive before that, we actually have two satellite locations. One will be servicing the south side of campus. So if you live in Juniper Poplar Hall or Magnolia Apartments, you'll actually go to Juniper Poplar Hall um, to get your key and all of that jazz. If you do live on any other community on campus, you'll actually go to Holly L, which is located just off of Holly Drive. So if you had to choose, you're an yes. incoming first year student, what yes. do you think the best day is to move on to campus? Grand opening, all day. Hands down, grand Hands opening. Down. No contest. I hear there's like 700 Bull Hall volunteers. There right? are. A ton so. of people there to help you move in. That's going to be great. That's great. You Absolutely. just like tip them five bucks or something. How does that work? I mean, no tips, just smiles. That's what we work it's, off. Of. They work for smiles. It's just smiles. I, I promise. like that. I like that. Um, oh, I think we have a question that just came in. Let me just take a quick look here. Sure. Um, so uh, we have a question here uh, from David who thinks this is really helpful. Very happy to be watching the show. He's wondering if if an RA isn't available in an mm -hmm. emergency situation, who do they contact? 
So, David, there will actually be a number of um, signs posted up in your residence hall that will give you pr give you information about how to contact one of our 24-hour desks. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of either your residence life coordinator or your assistant residence life coordinator or someone else in housing that can help you address whatever concern you might have. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. No um, problem. So we're talking about access to the building. How are yeah. the residents going to get into the hall? Yes. So once you check in, your swipe card access will be granted for you. And so you'll basically use your university provided ID card to swipe into your particular residence hall. And that ID card will only grant you access to your community and not any others on campus because that's not where you live. <laughs> and uh, for all of our residents, what can they expect to do once they've moved in? Oh, you can expect to do a number of things. Your RA will probably have a number of sort of tasky items that you have to complete, such as your room condition report or RCR. You're, you'll hear that term a lot. Um, your roommate agreement and all of those things. Your floor meeting will happen on Sunday. But in addition to that, you have a lot of opportunities for programs, other initiatives on campus that you can take, um, take advantage of during our week of welcome as well. Um, and again, they'll start as early as 4.30 p.m. on grand opening day with our kickoff event. Great. Well, thank you, Angie. Thank you so much for coming on the program. No tonight. problem. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to check out the next edition of Cash Cart. After that, we're going to be talking with Dr. Brianne Stanbeck, who's going to tell us about the Common Reading Program and what it's like being a faculty in residence. So we're going to take a look at that video and we'll be right back with more USF Housing Live. So we're here with Josh at JPH. Josh, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. All right, so are you ready to play a little bit of uh, Cash Cart? You know, I totally am, totally am. So up for this. Okay, so the way this works, we're going to go ahead and ask some trivia questions. You'll have the chance to earn Cart Cash. And then, of course, we'll have one big final question for you where you can bet it all and win big. How's that sound? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it sounds a little risky, yeah, but we'll do it, we'll do it. A little bit of risk involved here on the Cash Cart. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, Josh, I've got a tough question for you. All right. What building on the USF Tampa campus is frequently referred to as the bunker? Is it chemistry building, interdisciplinary studies, or the business building? I'm going to go with option B, Interdis interdisciplinary studies. Interdisciplinary studies is incorrect. Oh, I'm very sorry. That's okay. We'll try again. Can you tell me how many Starbucks coffee shops are there on campus? Is it two, three, or four? I'm going to say three. It is three. Correct. All right. You win one cart cash. Can you tell me how many gyms does the USF Tampa campus have? I know the answer to this question. Ah, I want to say it was four. Is that your answer? No, I'm going to say three, three. All right, he's going with three, and he is correct with three. All right, one more for you there. What does the acronym RA stand for? Resident Assistant. That's very, very good. Correct. All right, that is three. Can you tell me what does the acronym LLC stand for? Learning Living Community. It is incorrect. Ah. I am very sorry. Oh. It is living, learning community. Oh, I had it the other way around. Well, it's the other way around is another way. What did the beta basketball courts replace? I'm going to say swimming pool. That is correct. One more for you. If you get locked out of your room, where can you go to get a temporary key? Your front desk. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. <sighs> what kind of desk is it? Clerk desk? Ooh, I can't give it to you, Josh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We sorry, were looking sorry. for your area's 24-hour desk. Oh, That's okay. They're going to hate me for that one, taking that one away from you. I know. How many residents occupy a Poplar Hall suite? Is it two, four, or eight? Suite. In the suite itself. Is it two residents, four residents, or eight to a suite? It's four. You can hold four in a suite. Absolutely correct. I like how Josh just knew that one. Absolutely no... No extra thought required. He's all over it. That is one cart cash for you. Approximately how many students attend USF? Is it 40,000, 45,000, or 50,000? I remember this when I applied. I, I won't say it was 50,000. 50,000 is incorrect. It awesome. is 45,000. Can you tell me who was Betty Castor? I cannot answer that question. Betty Castor was USF's fifth president. What does HOT stand for, H-O-T? I have never heard the acronym HOT before. I'll give you a clue. They are musically inclined, and they like to move together. No more time, Josh. I'm sorry. It stands for the Herd of Thunder. HOT is the Herd of Thunder, USF's marching band. All right. Go Bulls. So we are at your destination. 
So we're going to go ahead and give you the chance. How much cart cash do you have? Five of these. All right, he's got five cart cash. You can walk with five and win our kitchen tool or a bank. So you can bet for a question to get the flashlight, or you can just walk with what you have. I'm going to walk. You're going to walk with what you have? I do. All right, so thank you very much for playing Cash Cart. And of course, your favorite YouTube show is what? Ah, uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd. Oh, that is incorrect. That is terrible. Well, All uh, right. It's USF Housing Live, of course. <laughs> and thank you very much, Josh. Go Bulls! All right, welcome back, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the second edition of Cash Cart. And don't worry, we're gonna have Cash Cart continue into the fall semester, so make sure to check it out right here on our YouTube channel. So we're here with Dr. Brianne Stanbeck. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's great to have you on the program. I got plenty of questions for you. You ready? I am. Are oh. you ready? Oh, oh, I was born ready. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, so first question, of course. Uh, you're a faculty in residence, so can you tell us what does that mean? Sure, I've been faculty in residence since fall of 2011, and it means a lot of things. But most importantly, it means that I live directly adjacent to the residence halls where our students live. And I'm there to provide sort of co-curricular academic support outside of the classroom. So I do a bunch of things in the community. Um, I teach in the community in Maple C classroom. I hold offices in Maple D. Um, I live in Maple B. And I support my other fellow faculty and residents, two of which who serve right now. And we also serve um, as liaisons uh, to the faculty side of things, as well as uh, important partners in academic initiatives. Great. Now, do you live in the room with the students? Is that how that works? I always get asked this question. No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I live adjacent to them in a really wonderfully appointed apartment, but we do share a common sort of vestibule front door, so I hear everybody coming and going. All right, so uh, they do get to know you, and, and uh, there are programs where they get to connect with you, right? Absolutely. In addition to just sort of being informal and around, I'm also um, at many programs and I have my own programs. I work a lot with the Green LLC. I also have a knitting program and we knit several times a semester together. And I'm just sort of around um, if students have academic questions. I get a lot of questions about the graduate school application process for some of our more upperclassmen. But for our underclassmen, I answer a lot of things about majors, being away from home, handling parents. So it's a mixed bag, but I love it. Great, great, thank you. Um, so I understand you also uh, are serving on the committee for the Common Read Experience. So can you tell us what is that? What does that mean for our incoming freshmen? Sure. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the program. The program is designed to get our whole campus involved in an intellectual conversation that's surrounded by topics related and themes related to a book. And so this is the second year we'll be doing it on this campus. And our book this year um, really highlights any number of things. It's called Full Body Burden and I was on the selection committee that picked it. And why it's important for our freshmen is, is that it immediately gets them going on many of the intellectual and artistic and creative activities going on on campus. Um, it will be taught in some of their first year composition classes. They'll see it in their academic foundation classes. And so it just gets them a real jump start on a lot of the academic and intellectual pursuits on this campus. Great, and um, uh, could you tell me, uh, uh, to switch gears, we're talking about move in. Sure. Um, so do you have any advice for students uh, and their parents, we talk about possible separation anxiety when you move away to college. Sure. I think this is a huge transition. And I think um, that the first thing to realize is that it is a big transition and that some anxiety is perfectly normal and perfectly expected. It's a big change for everybody, parents, children, siblings, everybody in the household. The most important thing is, I think, is to be organized and to sort of have a communication plan. Um, where you know the parent knows on this day that I'm going to talk to my child and the child knows on this day I'm going to check in. One of the things I see an awful lot is obviously I teach classes on this campus and cell phones ring all the time in my class and it's usually not their friends calling, it's their parents. <laughs> and so I always like our students to do their best to share their schedule. That way the parents know when they should be in class ideally. And again, to set up that plan. But I think open communication is key because oftentimes I think both parents and their child who is our new student on campus are a little scared to express that anxiety. So I think getting it out there and having open conversations as the fall semester goes on, especially as Thanksgiving and the holiday break comes, are really helpful and healthy things to do. Great, that's good to know. Uh, that does make me wonder, do you ever pick up the phone? Is that how you find out it's mom or dad calling? Well, I have a no cell phones policy in my class. And so if the phone is ringing, they will get the look, not usually from me, but from other students who will ask who's on the phone. And that's how I'll find oh, out. Oh, really? Yes. No, that's good to know. Yes. No cell phones in Dr. Stanbeck's class. We got that? <laughs> Spread the word. <laughs> <laughs>
great, great. Uh, we're going to just take a short break here. I have a few questions I want to address here. Sure. Feel free to jump in if okay. you've got any info on these. So uh, we did have a question uh, from Brandon about uh, a roommate who was body swapped with someone else and there was something switched due to a, a possible error they, they thought. So if you thought there was any type of error or you have a question or concern about the room change process, please email us housing at usf.edu, you'll get personalized assistance from our assignments team. So just go ahead and send that email to get that help. Unfortunately, I can't offer personalized assistance in this manner, but I'm glad that you contacted us and so now you know where to go to get help with your concern. Uh, we have another question here about shower curtains in Juniper Suites. So generally students don't need shower curtains, there, right. right? We're gonna provide the shower curtain? Right. Sure. Oh, you know it, right. Do <laughs> we provide you a shower curtain? I hope we do, so we'll hook you up there. Really? You don't know. Do we? Do we? I think I just promised shower curtains to all think, the faculty and I, residents. I think so. Okay. All right. They're coming right up. All right. So we'll get those <laughs> over to you. Um, I got a question here from Chris. Would like to know, do we need to bring laundry detergent and dryer sheets? So do you recommend they bring those? Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Right? Definitely. <laughs> and quarters and other things that you would need to do laundry. Absolutely. So actually, I, I talk about that at orientation, reminding our students that you can definitely use quarters. Uh, it'll make you very easy to locate when you're moving around at night. Correct. Um, but if you don't want to jingle and jangle, mm -hmm. they can put money on the bull bucks and just put money on your card online. So another great way to do that. But no, we don't provide laundry sheets or detergent in the laundry rooms there. So uh, another question, Sabia would like to know, are there any activities planned? for the 17th, that's the early move-in. So nothing that I know of. Do you know of anything for that early move-in day? I don't actually. Yeah, I don't I think don't. we have anything because we do recommend that all students make mm -hmm. sure to move in on the 21st. That's grand opening Thursday the 21st. So And at that point, you'll have so much to do, you won't even know what hit you. Oh yeah, so, so wow is coming, 10 right. days of events. That's Absolutely. gonna be great. Um, great, excellent. So. Um, we've got a few more questions. We're going to save those for just a moment. I want to say thank you so much for coming on the program. Oh, thank tonight. you so much for having me. It's great to have you. We're going to have a short break. We're going to watch a video about career services, and then we're actually going to talk with Ashley Motley, our expert guest from career services. So we're going to roll that. We'll be right back with more US of Housing Live. After <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Russ Kokenauer, the new Assistant Vice President for Career Services at the University of South Florida. I want to encourage you to take a close look at USF Career Services this upcoming year. There's a new energy here, and I'm personally inviting you to get involved with us early and continuously throughout your academic career. I think you'll like what you see. I hope you enjoy our five reasons you should use Career Services, brought to you by our career peers. We have something called major possibilities, and with that, we will help you find your major and what career path you can choose. So schedule an appointment with a career counselor now. At Career Services, we offer resume writing and cover letter critiquing. As a career peer, I work during Career Express, which is a walk-in service, and I like being a career peer because I get to help students like you. We offer a free resource to USF students called Employable. Employable gives chances for an employer to post part-time jobs, full-time jobs, co-ops, and even internships. We offer a lot of different resources for students to be a lot more career ready after graduation. For example, each semester we host the internship and part-time job fair located within the Marshall Student Center. For the fall, the fair will be on September 10th. Come out and visit Career Services. Before an interview, students should learn and understand how to research an employer. And here at Career Services, we can help. It's also important to have knowledge and understanding of a 30-second preview of yourself, which is known as an elevator speech. We can help you in the interview process. You can have an optimal interview online or schedule a mock interview with a career counselor.
I wish I would have known about our services as a freshman because I definitely would have been in our office way before actually applying for this job. Come to us early. Come to Career Services early. You don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're a senior. You don't really know what you want to do yet. Definitely set goals and do what you have to do and have responsibilities, but definitely have fun. Can anyone guess the song that that was based on? Anyone? Anyone out there? Tetris. Tetris, very good, very good. <laughs> that was really good. That was, uh, that was Chase over there, our expert on everything. So thank you very much, Chase. Um, so we're here with Ashley Motley from Career Services. Welcome, Ashley. Hi. Thank you for having me. Good to have you on the program here. So I've got a few questions about Career Services, and also uh, we've gotten a few questions about movement. We're going to get to those in just a moment, so please keep them rolling in. So, uh, Ashley, first question is, mm -hmm. what is Career Services? Yeah, great question, Greg. Um, we are the student affairs department that just takes care of all of the professional development for students. Um, and, and what that means is we help with everything from choosing a major to knowing what to do with that major to finding student employment and then getting ready for the internships and full-time job search. So, you know, just call us the dream maker on campus. Great, great. Well, dream maker. Mm -hmm. um, so they mentioned the video there talking about internship and part-time job fairs. Can mm -hmm. you tell us uh, when is that and what do they need to do to get ready? Yep. So that happens twice a year. And in the fall, that's on September 10th. And the best thing that students can do is come see us, have their resume critiqued, understand how to say hi and, and give what we call an elevator speech or just pitch themselves to an employer. But that particular fair is in the Marshall Center. It's pretty casual. And, and all that info um, with the other event info is on our website. So that's um, usf.edu slash career hyphen services. Great, great. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we get this question all the time. I'm sure you do too. Students want to know, how can they get assistance finding a job on campus mm -hmm. while they're here? Yep. So again, we have a, a couple different types of service. We have a walk-in service called Career Express, and that was um, showcased in the commercial. But all of those hours are on our website, and that's a great way for students to come in, walk in, get some resume and cover letter help without needing an appointment. Or they can, they can come make an appointment with myself or any of our other wonderful career counselors by calling that 813-974-2171 number. Great. I love the yeah. shameless plug. I, know. I always love it. I know. Excellent. <laughs> what about those students, though, that, that um, they haven't chosen a major yet? They're not sure. Mm -hmm. um, do you play a role in their experience? Definitely, definitely. Um, we usually partner closely with the Transitional Advising Center especially, but for students that haven't yet selected a major, um, we help with that. So we have some great career assessments, some very talented career counselors that can help just talk students through that process, make sure that they're doing something that plays to their interests, their values, something that their personality fits into. Great, great. Are there other free resources that your uh, area offers mm -hmm. to students? Definitely. The biggest one being employable. So that's the database that we have where all of the employers off campus. So for part-time jobs, internships, full-time positions, co-ops, everything, uh, that's um, free for students to access where our employers post and that's how we communicate to our students. So we let them know about what kind of events are happening. Once they activate their account with us, they'll get emails from us. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So you know moving is right around the corner. It is. So when you think about that and you think back to when you started out in college, I I'd love for you to share some mm -hmm. advice for the incoming students and their families. Yeah. Um, well, when it comes to career services, I would just say, you know, get connected with us early, get connected with us in your first year so there's no panic attacks in the senior year. And, um, and, and just general advice, I think, keep in touch with your family, make sure that you spend quality time when you go home, but really just get involved on campus, make it your new home. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're starting to see some questions come in. We got awesome. a mix of some housing ones and uh, career services. Okay. Ones. So let's go into some live question mm -hmm. time here. 
Uh, I see we have a question uh, about uh, USF offering renter's insurance. So USF does not provide renter's insurance, but if you go to usf.edu slash housing, mm -hmm. click on the move-in banner, and you'll see links to a couple companies. Those are examples, not endorsements, but check them out and definitely consider purchasing renter's insurance. Doesn't matter if it's from that website or from another one that you find, but you want to have renter's insurance to have your stuff protected. Make sure you have that. All right, so next up we have students asking, if I start in the spring, do I get bull hall? I'm sorry, there is not a bull hall move and assistance program, but if you are connecting with us in the class of 2018, mm -hmm. 16, 17 mm -hmm. Facebook group, pick your poison, mm -hmm. be in the group, mm -hmm. you can get to know students before you get here. Build those connections, take advantage of that, and help one another. And that way you can get that support. So mm -hmm. we see students doing that already. Most of the current incoming freshman classes in their group join that and get that support. And you'll definitely find help right around the corner when you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, are there microwaves in the Juniper Hall kitchens? So we do not provide micro we do provide microwaves. We do not provide microwaves in the Juniper Hall kitchens there. So sorry. There was a staff member off camera who was like, we do. Oh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you who. Because I'll get fired. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, so <laughs> as they take like a little hook out and I go off the camera, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a question here. Can we leave our stuff in the rooms during breaks? Of course you can. Um, you'll just have to defrost your fridge. You'll have to do some cleaning, uh, but that'll all be covered by your RA. Make sure you attend the meeting where you discuss that, but you can leave your personal belongings in your room if you're staying with us from fall into spring. Um, so someone's asking here. We've got Shay asking, when we check out of our residence halls in December, do we take everything with us? So as I just said, nope, don't need to take everything with you. You will not be able to access your residence hall, though, over the winter break. So make sure you do take those personal belongings that you might need with you. So we've got a question for you. Awesome. Um, Let's go. Nathaniel would like to know, how hard is it to get a job on campus if we have no job history? question of the year, um, probably the most frequently asked question by students. Uh, it really, it, a lot of our incoming students don't have previous job experience and so that's why it's important for them to play up their co-curriculars. So whatever sort of student orgs or volunteer experiences they had prior to being at USF, those can all go under an experience section on their resume. So it's very common. What our departments are looking for is just a well-written resume um, so that they can see those transferable skills. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan would like to know, where is the Career Services Office located? Yeah, uh, well right now we're, we're kind of tucked back up in the corner of the Student Services Building in 2088. All right, so mm -hmm. I know if you watch the video that just played, we have that little fast motion, so mm -hmm. just play that on your phone if you can and follow it or just run if you want to keep pace, and that'll <laughs> take you to the Career <laughs> Services Center there, so yep. definitely check that out. Um, question here, can Career Services help us write a resume, cover letter, or do they just critique it? So if you would just expand on that a little bit, please. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a ton of wonderful online examples that could help students get started with a rough draft, but if students are absolutely stuck, then of course they can come use that walk-in service Career Express, or they can make an appointment with myself and a career counselor, but I like to at least see students attempt to make maybe just a brainstormed list of the things they've been involved in because that helps us more when they come to talk with us. Great, great. Mm -hmm. And one final question here. I, I'm not sure if, we'll see if you can help us with this. Let's um, do it. Uh, Noelle would like to know, when do federal work study students have to have a job by? Oh, well, actually, um, their award never goes away. They could technically job search all year long, but the peak hiring time is now until September. So we've got some, actually, some stats on that back from HR. So students really want to try to find a job between now and the end of September so they can fully maximize their award, but it won't ever go away, so technically all year. Great. Thank you so much, You're Ashley. Welcome. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on the program. So mm -hmm. I know Ashley from grad school. She's wonderful. Go <laughs> to Career Services. Say hi to Ashley. Just thank you so much for being on the program. You're welcome. So we're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back with Toli Gentoli from Residential Life and Education. Mm -hmm. So we'll check that out. We'll be back with more USF Housing Live right after this.
welcome back. Tolly Jen Tolly. welcome to USF Housing Live. Thank you. So glad to have you on the program. You ready to answer some questions? Yeah, absolutely. Let's get right to it. So um, the big question here I wanted to ask you, uh, we always say RLC and ARLC. Mm -hmm. We throw that term around all the time. Could you clarify what that means, who these individuals are? Yeah, absolutely. So an RLC is a residence life coordinator and an ARLC is an assistant residence life coordinator. And those are the people that oversee the buildings that you live in. They supervise the RA staff, they work with the hall council, they're the people you can go to as a really great resources on campus. Um, some of your halls will have just a residence life coordinator, some will have both a, an ARLC and an RLC, and others will just have an, R, an ARLC with an RLC working with them indirectly. Great, great, thank you. Yeah. Um, can you tell me uh, if the residents want to get in touch with you, how do mm -hmm. they do that? So all our information is posted on the housing website, um, all our contact information including our office phone number and our email address, as well as it's posted outside of each of our offices with our office hours. Um, and your RA will have that information as well, they're kind of like the immediate line to us too. And so we talk about the RAs, mm -hmm. how do the residents find out who their RA is? So and when they move into their building on their floor, their door will probably be all decked out with, I'm your RA, come and see me. And the RA will be walking around introducing themselves, um, having those conversations with you too to help you get connected to campus. Great, great. And one of the things I know they're going to be talking about is WOW. So mm -hmm. I know WOW means mom spelled upside down. And uh, almost. Does it, mean, <laughs> does it mean anything else? It does. It means week of welcome. And so it's about a week, week and a half of actual programs and events that we have going on throughout campus, within your hall, within um, different communities on campus that your RA or others in the building will probably be going to. So you can pair up with RAs in the building. Or if you find a group that's like, hey, I really want to go to this event, you all can go together. And that's something I know a lot of students uh, might feel nervous about going to an event, maybe I don't know a lot of people here, mm -hmm. uh, are there methods that they can get together with groups and head out to an event together? How does that work? Yeah, RAs will probably organize it with their floors, um, or you can talk to your roommate and say, like, hey, let's get a group together. Um, but the RAs are one of the key points of kind of getting people together to take them to the events that are of common interest. Great, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's see, we've got some more questions that are just flying in <laughs> right here. Sorry, that was a federal work study one there. So and some body swap, swap questions. Those are for assignments, so let me just address that real That's quick. That's totally fine. Uh, so if you have a question about any body swaps or assignment change requests, remember you need to email housing at usf.edu and you'll get personalized assistance from our assignments team. So make sure you go ahead and do that and we'll take care of you. So uh, we'll go back in a few more questions I got for mm -hmm. you, Tolly. Um, so this is something uh, as a bit more of a sensitive issue. Students mm -hmm. have contacted me about this over Facebook. I'd like to pose this to you if you could share a little bit and help illuminate this. So yeah. um, some, some students have raised concerns um, regarding how a future roommate might react to them. Uh, let's say if they are gay or if they identify with a gender that differs from their sex. Um, what can you share to help prepare these individuals for the residential experience. Absolutely. So I think it's important to note that it is your identity, it's how you self-identify, and what you choose to identify yourself at is up to you. Um, and so that they shouldn't feel obligated to disclose something they don't feel comfortable with. And to give that time to get to know their roommate um, and get to know other people on their hall to build that community, because nine times out of 10, once you get to know your roommate, you're gonna have a really successful experience. Great, great. And I, I always share this is an open and welcome campus. Yeah, absolutely, and, um, absolutely. Are the resources available for those students? Yeah, there? there's plenty of resources. So the Office of Multicultural Affairs has a, um, a graduate assistant for the LGBT community and they have um, a pride organization and the Trans Plus Student Union that's on campus as well as many other organizations that service the LGBTQ community. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so now reflecting back on that big move-in day, uh, what's your advice for our incoming residents and their families as they prepare to start the college experience? Just be excited, have an open mind, um, come in with the excitement, the Go Bulls attitude, and you'll do great. Great, totally. Thank you so much for coming on thank the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so we're going to take a short break. We're going to watch a video about CLCE, and of course, we're going to have another episode of Being Serene. We'll be back in just a moment with Serene Gatto, one of our resident assistants, and of course, one of the marketing team, marketing team's own individuals. So we're looking forward to having Serene on the show. We'll be right back with more U.S. Housing Live right after this. Hey Bulls, my name is Joanne Rodriguez. I'm a student assistant and student leader here at the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement. I'm going to give you guys a tour today so you can learn a little more about our office. Just so you know, we're located on the first floor of the Marshall Center, so it's convenient for you to visit anytime. Here we have our front office where you'll find our administrative specialist as well as our director. Just want to say hello. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome.
Here we have Todd Wells, our director. Todd, can you tell us a little bit more about the center? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement, also known as the CLCE is what we love to call our center. We work to create positive social change, and that is through developing leaders who are involved in their community. And so if you want a place um, to get involved, to be part of a family that really cares about creating change, this is the place to do it. This is our back office where all the magic happens. Students come here to meet, gather, make community, as well as plan the projects that we have for the year. Here at the CLCE, you can find five leadership boards that apply to your interests, help you get involved, and make an impact in our community. One of our most successful programs that's really seen growth in the last year is Dance Marathon, or this year, as students will know it, as Bulls for Kids. And it's a student organization that raises awareness and money for All Children's Hospital over in St. Pete. It's connected to Children's Miracle Network nationwide. And this is a program that nationwide universities get involved, put on an annual dance marathon that at other schools ranges up to 24 to 36 hours. Here, ours is 12 hours long. And we raise, um, last year we raised $41,000. This is our classroom. Here you can come to take courses to get a leadership minor, or you can just come in and take some of the leadership training programs we have all year long. We're excited about CHARGE, August 23rd um, from 8 a.m. till noon. Uh, so students can go and do community service with their fellow Bulls in their new community. The great thing about CHARGE and many of our programs is it really groups you with people who have similar interests as you, and it helps you um, get to know people in a way that isn't so forced. So doing community service is one of the best ways to get to know other people. Sign up for CHARGE on our website at leadandserve.usf.edu anytime between now and the start of school. So whether you're looking to find a home or meet people with the same interests as you, we hope you come and visit the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement to develop leadership skills, make friends, or just make an impact in your community. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Welcome to Being Serene, starring me, Serene. I'm here to tell you some important things that every freshman should know. Keys, they unlock your door. Without them, you can't get in your room. So don't forget them. Don't skip class. The day you feel like skipping class, that's gonna be the day the teacher gives extra credit. And then you're like, let me go to class the next week. And then they don't give extra credit and you keep going and then they never give extra credit again. And so you should really just not skip class in the first place and that way you don't miss out on the extra credit. Warning, it rains in Florida, randomly. You should always carry an umbrella with you, that way you don't get stuck in between classes. Meal plans, nom 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 nom. Everyone who lives on campus has a meal plan, so you might as well use it. Come on and hang out with your friends and eat some delicious food. Pack smart, and please don't be the one that makes your room look like this. Get to know your RA, they know things. I should know because I am one. Join a student organization. It's a great way to get involved. Maybe even start out with your first hall council meeting. Make new friends and have a great time. USF is a really great and diverse university where we accept people for who they are and we encourage you to be yourself. I'm being serene, so why don't you go be you? Thanks for watching Being Serene. We look forward to having you all here on campus this coming fall. And now back for some more USF Housing Live. <laughs> Welcome back to USF Housing Live. So uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm Gregory Bowers with Housing Residential Education. I am here with the incredible, intelligent, and amazing Serene Gatto. Serene, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. All right, welcome. You happy to be on the program? I'm thrilled. <laughs> All right, so I know you work on our marketing team. You help produce it, so it's exciting to have you out in front of the camera here yeah, with us Yeah, it's tonight. definitely exciting to be on the, the side of the camera. <laughs> well, we're actually going to be talking about your other job, that you are an RA, a resident assistant. So uh, how long have you been an RA? I'm actually going into my third year as an RA, so a little while I've that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so I'm getting all kinds of questions, and I can tell you right now, uh, Nathaniel would like to know how do you become an RA. So, mm -hmm. is it the first day they sign up and they're an <laughs> RA and they're good to go? No, no, no. So you can't come in and just be an RA as a freshman. Um, but definitely, as a freshman, you can apply to be an RA starting your sophomore year, and so um, that application will come out kind of right before winter break. So keep an eye out for that. Definitely. 
Great, great. Um, and uh, what are some of the responsibilities of the RA position? Okay, there's a lot of responsibilities. Uh, some of the things that we do are we make programs for our residents, um, and those are really to help enrich the experience on campus. Um, we're here as a resource in order to help, you know, if there's any concerns that you have or you, you don't really, like maybe you're not doing so well on in a class, and you're like, what do I do? Well, your RA is definitely someone to go to, and they'll direct you towards all those resources. Great, great. Um, can you tell me, why do RAs even exist? <laughs> a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, God, can you imagine the chaos? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs so. and cats. Me, actually, I'm sorry. On this campus, ducks, squirrels, and cats living together. Mass hysteria. <laughs> Am I right? I hear they're like, are they like gangs like on campus, the three animal of, sets? Of, oh, the squirrels? Right? Absolutely. Oh, there's the squirrel gangs, there's the, the duck gangs. I don't know what the, the other one is that you're referring to. You what, the cats? There's the ca cats? Oh, there are cats. There you're are right. cats here you're and there. Right. Not everywhere. <laughs> Parents are freaking out at home right now. Just we've seen them from time to time. No. It is Florida. I'm not even joking, though. I saw, I remember one time there was like a group of squirrels that were hanging out by a bus stop once. It was, it was pretty hilarious. Were they, like they were waiting for the bus? Yeah, they were, I don't know. They were just like hanging out, just like. Well, if they do have a USF ID, so. we are entitled to give them a lift. So, I mean, as long as they make sure to have their USF ID, they're good to go. So, um, we'll go back into some other questions I okay. have for you here. The, the remainder of the interview will be squirrel focused. All right. Oh, so, perfect. Um, My expertise. <laughs> can you tell me um, how can parents support their student while they're away at school? Okay. Um, well, definitely encourage them to get involved. You know, there's so much to do um, in college, and so uh, that's one aspect. But also um, encouraging them to maybe stay on campus as many weekends as possible. I know that they may get homesick. I remember getting a little homesick when I was a freshman. But the more time you spend on campus, the more likely you are to make friends and really to get involved. And so as much as you may not want them <laughs> to be staying on campus, you may miss them, just encourage them to dive in. And I'm glad that you brought up homesickness. Is that something that's really uncommon or, or is that possible uh, for some of our residents? I definitely think it's possible. Um, depending on how far you're moving, you know, this may be a really big change for you. You may be someone who's really used to having your family around and so it can be difficult. But, you know, maybe talk to your RA. They're always there to um, be a friend. And also, like I said, getting involved in different organizations is a great way to kind of distract yourself from that. Mm -hmm. oh, great, great. Um, so I would like you to think about uh, yourself when you started out in the college experience here at USF. If you could talk to Serene from the past, what's some of the advice you would give her? Oh, I feel like I've already said it, you know, getting involved. I, I do know that my freshman year I wasn't super involved in a lot, and like I said, I said I did get homesick. Um, and there's so many things that I'm doing now, and I'm entering my senior year, and I'm kind of going in freak out mode, like, oh my god, I want to do everything. <laughs> and so I kind of wish that I had delved in earlier. Well, great, great, thank you. we we got another live question for you oh, here. Uh, so Stefan would like to know, if I want to have my bed <laughs> lofted, I believe he means raised, I want to have my bed <laughs> raised, how far in advance would I need to inform my RA? So how does that work? Um, if you want to have your bed raised, you don't necessarily have to inform your RA. You can actually put in a work request on the housing website, usf.edu slash housing, click maintenance request, and you put it in, and someone will come in and raise it to the height that you wish, um, and that will happen probably within 48 hours. But do make sure not to do that until you move in, because if you do it before you move in, it'll just confuse them. Yeah, it'll get canceled, <laughs> I believe, too, if they do it before <laughs> they arrive, right? Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> um, and uh, if they need help, can they go to the RA for assistance entering that work request? Absolutely. You're RA will have all the information and knowledge of completing that and so they're happy to help. I know I'm, I'm happy to. Great, great. Well we're thinking about week of welcome. Um, should students get out there and do it? Is there anything in particular you should be looking for for that week of welcome time? Oh, I don't think I can say anything in particular because there's just so much to do a week of welcome. So I mean definitely do something. There will be a brochure that you'll get that has all the stuff happening each day. So look through that and find something that interests you. and. I keep saying get involved, and that's one great way, too, because lots of organizations will have events d during that week as well. Great. Well, Serene, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. We actually have a special message for all of you out there from your student body vice president and president. So we're going to roll that. I'll be right back with more USF Housing Live. <laughs> The most important thing to do is to get involved as a bull. You're going to hear it a lot during your USF experience, but don't take it for granted. What this really means is that everything that you do 
is foundational. We have so many resources, utilize them. You have so many friendships, make those friendships. It's really not all about studying. It's, it's all about making the university experience yours and really making it memorable. So when you look back on your life, you know, you have the memories and that's really what's the most important thing. Good vibes and go Bulls. My fellow Bulls, my fellow new freshmen coming in and parents, I want to thank you all for first of all choosing the University of South Florida as your home institution. I promise you that it's going to be a great four years here at the University of South Florida and you're going to get involved in almost anything here at USF, from Greek life, from being an RA, from going out in the community, from joining various organizations. It's going to be a great experience for you and your family. And so thank you so much for considering us as your home. And I encourage you to get involved in student government and always be active in what you do here as a student. So good vibes, and as always, go Bulls. Welcome back. So, so that's it. We're here at the end of the program and actually the end of the series. This concludes season one of USF Housing Live. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure to serve you in this capacity. We are housing and residential education. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. So thank you again for watching. I hope you take a minute and check out all the other videos we've posted prior to this to help get you ready. And of course, I got to say one thing, it's very important. Happy birthday, Dad. 68 tomorrow. I hope you are fully embarrassed. All right, so this is USF Housing Live. I'm Gregory Bowers. Thanks again for watching, and there's just one last thing. Go! 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 Figure out what to do with your life. Okay, that was good, except for the upside down side. Uh, you can come into Career Express, which I don't know what to say. Hold on. So here at Career Services... No, why am I saying that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want. Maybe a gold bull sign collar? or something. Yeah, I pop the collar, okay. bull sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What should I do? Bull sign? Bull sign. That is not the bull sign. <laughs> What's the worst cover letter you've ever seen? The worst cover letter I've ever seen is Eddie's. <laughs>